Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter where it's all about making better videos. A big part of making videos for me is doing reviews and product related things. And the best way to do that I have found is with a tabletop shooting rig or overhead shooting rig. And I don't know how I lived without one. So today I'm gonna to show you how I put mine together. There's a lot of little pieces, so definitely check the description. I'll have links to all the parts that we're gonna be talking about. And without further ado, let's head over to the bench and put this thing together. So here are all the parts I use to build the overhead camera setup. But before we build it, we need to set up a temporary overhead camera since all of my parts for mine are sitting here on the table. The first thing you're going to need is a Matthews baby plate. They come in several different sizes. I've been using their 12 inch version. To get our temporary overhead camera set up, we're going to mount that plate to the ceiling using screws. And then next we can add an impact rapid baby. This adapts that 5 8 stud to a quarter 20 thread. From there, I just took an old video head and screwed it onto the rapid baby and then added my camera. This will get us by until we finish building the overhead camera rig. So back to the parts needed to build the rig that I use on a daily basis. The first thing we're gonna need is the same Matthews plate that we just talked about, and then a grip head. I use one from Impact, cost me around 18 bucks. We're going to mount that grip head to the stud after we attach it to the ceiling. The next thing we need is a way to extend or drop the whole camera rig down. To do this, I use part of a light stand that I've had for a long time. It's an Impact 2 section backlight stand. It's three feet tall. And while we're only going to use part of this stand, it's nice to have. It's pretty cheap. And the kit comes with really heavy legs that can branch out and open up. And then you can either use a 5 8 stud to get your light really low, or you can use that extension arm. So even though we're going to use part of this for kind of a permanent setup, we still have a light stand out of the kit. The next thing we need is a camera platform. So this is one I picked up for around $10. And what's cool is we have several mounting options for the camera, the microphone, and we can take all of that stuff and then mount it to a 5 8 stud. Next, we're going to need a couple monitor arms. This is optional, but I wanna use these monitor arms for my lighting and my microphone. These cost around 10 bucks and we're gonna need two of them. For the arm that's going to mount the light, we're also going to need a clamp. I really like these Manfrotto nano clamps and they cost $35. The problem is that once you add all that up, it's somewhat expensive. But recently I found a kit on Amazon that comes with a clamp and a monitor arm for 15 bucks. So I picked up two of those and I think that's a more economical way and you get an extra clamp out of it. The next thing we need is a ball head for the actual camera. You can go really cheap and use something like this $13 mini ball head or spend as much as you want and get something a little larger and nicer. I happen to have this open ball head sitting around so it worked really well for me. Just keep your camera's weight in mind when you pick out a head. Next, we're going to need a microphone. I really love this $59 microphone from Rode. It is the Rode Video Micro and it works fantastic. The next item is optional and that is a power source for the camera that isn't a battery. You can buy these adapters online for your camera. I actually built this one and I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. This will allow us to power the camera whenever we're ready to shoot and we don't have to worry about batteries dying and keeping them charged. What you're watching is all lit from just the lights in the room, obviously they cast shadows and they're not very nice. I used to use these Switronics LED panels and they worked really well, but recently I've been using my flex light with the silk that came with it. And you'll see later how awesome this thing is. So now that we have all the parts, let's go ahead and start putting this together. We're going to mount the Matthews plate to the ceiling, attach our grip head, and then I added one of these little R safety clips. And this is going to keep the camera and the whole setup from crashing down if something gets loose. Next, we're going to add our extension arm to the grip head. When you do this, you make sure you want to attach it correctly so that the weight of the whole rig actually tightens the head instead of loosening it. So you can see here, if I pull down on the arm, it's going to tighten up the head. It's not going to loosen it up over time. A general rule is keep the weight on the right side. So you can see I have everything mounted on the right side and it's going to keep things nice and snug. Now let's get our camera ready. We're going to mount whatever head we're using onto the camera platform. And then there's a little quarter 20 near where we attach the head. At that point, I'm going to add a friction arm and that's gonna be used with our microphone. Next, we take that entire setup we just put together and attach it to our extension arm. From there, we can add the camera to the head and then get everything nice and level. 
Here I'm adding a microphone and we'll talk about how I use that later. I also bought a longer coiled cable for the microphone on Amazon and it's been working really well. So at this point we have a working overhead camera setup. Now we're gonna add some lights. This is optional, you could add lights separately, but I like to have it all in one rig. Most lights have a female quarter 20 socket somewhere that you can use with your monitor arm. The flex mount, there's an accessory that lets you adapt to quarter 20. So I just stuck the friction arm end through that hole and then added a wing nut. Once you have that, you can add the clamp to the end of the friction arm. Now we can mount our light on the actual arm and you'll see later how this all works. And that does it. Now we have a all-in-one overhead camera rig that can easily be moved around the studio as need be. So what I love about the setup is I can quickly make changes to where the camera is and everything moves together. The microphone, the camera, and the light are all attached together. So you can see here, if I wanna get a macro shot um, and audio, I can just drop this knob, move everything down, turn my light on, and uh, I can make adjustments from there. So um, really, really works well. I don't know how I live without this thing. And you can see I can move it up here. Another way I use it, uh, because I'm using a prime lens, I don't have zooming capabilities, so I can't just willy-nilly change my focal length without moving the camera. So if you have a zoom lens, you probably wouldn't need something this extravagant, but it is nice to be able to do some macro stuff and get really close, even if you did have a zoom lens. But most of the time, this is usually kind of how I have things set up. I've got a decent focal range, um, which works really well for most of the videos that I do. And uh, for the microphone, you can see I have it already hooked up here and I'm going to switch to the camera here and you kind of hear what things sound like. Um, adding a microphone to a tabletop seems kind of weird to be listening to things on the table, but I found that it adds a lot of immersion as opposed to just voiceover and having no sound of the actual object. So let's take a listen. Another audio setup I use all of the time is actually this microphone for voiceover while I'm doing stuff on the table. Uh, I used to use a cardioid mic. I have a XLR run and I have this whole setup for that. But this little Rode microphone is pretty impressive. So what I'm going to do now is grab something, put it in the frame, start recording. And I'm just going to step in front of you guys and switch to this other camera so that you can hear me getting this thing ready. So let's see, check, check, check. Testing one, two, something like that. Lock it down, check one, two. Um, I'm gonna step back so you can see kind of what's going on. I have the microphone aimed for roughly right here and that seems to work pretty good. So let me step back and frame here and here we go. So I've got a broken Nikon 100 millimeter. If you wanna learn how it got broken, you can watch my video on my lenses. Um, lots of good stuff over there. Talked about a lot of my lenses. So blah, 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 works really well. $59 for this microphone, um, pretty impressive. So, uh, and since it's $59, I'm okay with spending the money to have it as a dedicated microphone for this setup. So, you know, I wouldn't buy a video mic pro and leave it here permanently, but for 59 bucks, it's hard to beat. So this is mostly how I use the setup, but then again, I do go in for the close shot every once in a while. So I'm still recording on this camera, so you can watch that live. And this lens is pretty great for getting farther out. My lighting looks a little weird, so I can make some adjustments there. You can get really nice, fine details of dirty lenses that need to be cleaned. So there you have it, that is my overhead camera rig setup. Now, if you don't have low ceilings like I do, but you want a similar setup, I would recommend getting two stands or C-stands and then running a bar across the two, put that over wherever you're shooting, and then attach a super clamp to that. Now, a super clamp is a kind of like those little clamps we looked at, but a monster version. So that'll easily clamp on the bar running over your tabletop shooting area. And then there will be a receiving female 5 8 hole on the super clamp. You'll be able to insert that arm that we talked about and essentially give you a lower ceiling, if you will. And that should work great if you have really high ceilings. So that does it for me this week, guys. Make sure you check the description for links to all the different parts I use and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.